post-stroke fatigue is a very common problem amongst stroke survivors. We recently demonstrated that those who exhibited high levels of post-stroke fatigue showed low levels of motor cortex excitability of the lesion hemisphere, which was not reflected in muscle strength or finger dexterity or measures of cognitive ability such as sustained attention. And now behavioural measures such as movement times and reaction times have been known to be associated with motor cortex excitability. Now we wondered if the difference in motor cortex excitability between high and low fatigue manifested in a behavioural measure such as movement times and reaction times. Now we hypothesised that movement times which were more dependent on motor cortex excitability may be different between those with high and low fatigue whereas reaction times which are a reflection of movement preparation may not be different between the high and low fatigue stroke survivors. 41 chronic stroke survivors with first-time stroke participated in the study, 21 suffered from high levels of fatigue and 20 uh, had low levels of fatigue. Now fatigue was defined using fatigue severity scale and a score of 5 and above was considered as high and 3 and below was considered as low. Stroke survivors with poor motor and cognitive function were excluded from the study and motor function was quantified using the measures 9-hole peg test, grip strength action research arm test and cognitive ability was quantified using symbol digits modalities test. Grip strength was measured using a handheld dynamometer and patients were instructed to squeeze as hard as they could. Action Research Arm Test, a standard upper limb function test, was used. Patients were required to pick objects of different sizes and place them on the table in front of them, and they were timed during this task. A nine-hole peg test was used to quantify finger dexterity in all participants. Um, they were allowed three attempts, and the best of three attempts was taken as uh, their NHPT score. Symbol digits modalities test is a test of mental speed. On the left here is the coding sheet. Participants were required to match the appropriate symbols with the numbers and fill in as many boxes as they could in 120 seconds. On the right is the copy sheet where they were required to simply copy the symbols in the boxes below in 90 seconds. Here is a demonstration of the simple reaction time and movement time tasks. Participants pressed down on the home button and waited for the presentation of a light cue. They were instructed to release the home button as soon as the light flashed and go across and press the target button as quickly as possible and return to their home button. 25 such trials were performed, cues were 10 seconds apart with 20% random variance in the inter interval. Here is a demonstration of the choice reaction time task. Participant placed their right and left index fingers on buttons right and left respectively. The task was to respond to the LED flash with the appropriate button press. 50 such trials were performed, 25 for each hand. The order of presentation was randomised into Q interval and the into Q interval was similar to the simple reaction time task of 10 seconds with the 20% random variance. A three-way analysis of variance statistical test was performed with three factors. The first factor being hand, either affected or unaffected. The second factor was task, simple reaction time, choice reaction time or movement time. The third factor was fatigue, high or low fatigue. There was a significant three-way interaction between hand, task and fatigue levels. Post hoc tests revealed that there was a significant difference between those with high and low fatigue in the movement time task 
but only in the affected hand. The slowing of movement times in the affected hand and not the unaffected hand suggests that the lesion might be directly responsible for the development of post-stroke fatigue. Now, the second important conclusion that we can draw from the study is that post-stroke fatigue is a corticomotor problem and not cognitive problem. A difference in movement times but not reaction times suggests that post-stroke fatigue may not be a problem of movement preparation but a problem of movement execution. And therefore, post-stroke fatigue may not be a cognitive problem as has been commonly thought of before.